Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and we're going to continue on with uh, the uh, plans for the Polk stand-up desk. And I'll show you where I've gotten since the last video. So on the last one, I was here with the visual cut list, and I had uh, I was into the fifth sheet of plywood. Well, I kept working it, and I got it down to three sheets of half-inch. And the way I did that was I nested as much as I could. And uh, I also um, took the base of the desk, and I'll show you this, which was a solid piece, and uh, made the end caps for the desk from inside of that. Because uh, since I added a drawer, I didn't need a solid shelf there, and I didn't give up any structure. And I'll show you how that worked out. Um, I also had... Uh, two of these uh, bases, they're spacers blocks for the casters um, so that there's a, a little bit more solid than the half inch base. And what I did was decided instead of having two pieces that small out of three quarter that you'd have to chase down, I went ahead and made double, I laminated two pieces together at a half inch and that then will allow, you know, to stick with that material. Of course, if you've got some three quarter scrap, you can do that and just do two instead of four. But I was able to find a place in, uh, inside uh, of the existing three sheets. So I've got that down to three pieces. When I did that, of course, that three quarter uh, versus two pieces a half, that makes it a quarter inch thicker. So I, I upped the screw size to uh, two inches uh, to go through uh, the bottom as well as two layers of half inch and into the caster and a washer me bolted on Okay, so what I've done is I've started to put this together for the plan view over and layout and I've created you see across these Tabs here. These are called views. So if I start on the first one, that's the main view so that will show um, you know, just basically a you know a, a quick snapshot of the finished product and then I did one showing the drawer open and all I did there was just do a second drawer um, made a copy and then I made one visible and one invisible so the one out is visible the one that's in is invisible when I'm in this mode so if I grab the layers panel over here you can see that I've created these different layers and by checking uh, off and on the view um, of the layer what's visible when I'm in this mode uh, over here that view tab records it and I'll show you what I mean here um, so I'm in this uh, let me open this up a little bit more so these are the layers I have so far and they're not all necessary some of them I'm going to clean up here uh, as I get further but um, so for example, I have the drawer open is checked and the drawer closed is unchecked. So if I uncheck drawer open, you can see it disappears. Now if I go to this tab and I click it again, see it comes right back because it memorizes what I want. But if I come in here and I, I make it invisible and then I go here, right click and update. Now if I click it, it doesn't change because it's memorized whatever checks are here it's memorized those so I'll click it again drawer open and then I will right click and update so that's how I make these different views I, uh, I've got everything um, right here together but you can only see what I want you to see so if I go and click on the back and the bottom and here this will show you where I cut out the two end caps that go here I cut them out of the base here because with the drawer, that doesn't need to be solid, and I've got plenty of structure there for shear. Um, so it was just a way to save from getting into a fourth piece. And you can see here that I doubled up the um, half-inch plywood for the caster bases. And once I get these plans done, uh, I'm going to make note that I don't know which casters you're going to find or use, and the whole pattern may diff be different. So I'm going to not give the dimensions on these whole patterns. I'm going to recommend that you just take the casters, lay them on there, make a, a pencil mark, 
in on both ends, drill those holes out and use that one as a template to make the other three, as well as to drill the holes in the bottom of the cabinet where the, um, where the uh, carriage bolts will go through, you can see in here. So I'm not going to indicate these because who knows what kind of casters you're gonna get, but at least you'll know, you know, it'd be pretty straightforward and easy to do. Now, if I click on this bottom again, you can see even though I rotated it around, it takes me right back to where it memorized it. And then, so if I go back to my main view, um, I also did a, an exploded view and I'll click on that. And you can see all I did there was I created a copy of that main view and then I went through and edited it by pulling it all apart. And then I created this exploded view uh, tab. And then I just went in and turned on what was necessary uh, for this exploded view. And so if I um, you know, turn off, uh, for example, um, let's say I turn off, you know, I've grouped, I also grouped them. So I grouped this as a it's all as one group if i click on it you can see that it's all contained in one one box and so i was able to call that group exploded view so if i turn that off and then i turn on the complete view now i've got the same uh, as my main view but if i click on exploded view again it goes right back again because i did not right click and save so i hope that makes sense um, these um, views, there is a um, scenes, actually they're called scenes. Uh, so there are these scenes and the way I get this, I'm gonna close some of these up here. These stick together so you make a nice little panel. And if I click that, so I can see my scenes and my layers and I can work together here. So I can jump back and forth. Um, and uh, you know, just jump around here. That's the same as clicking on these tabs. But all I do is hit a plus and it will give me another scene. And then I right click on the scene and rename it and call it, I'll call this one test. And then if I come in and say, I've got something totally different going on, maybe um, uh, let's, uh, let's turn off the um, complete view and turn on let's see one of the things about these layers when you're grouped um, if the group isn't on the individual thing won't be on so um, in uh, for example complete view that's a group and then if I uh, click off drawer close you can see it disappears um, because even though that's its own little group or component, it is, it is housed in a larger group that I've named complete view. So if that is off, no matter what I do on the ones that are or on the parts that are in that group, they won't show up. But if I come in here and um, I want to make the, uh, it's gonna be hard to pick one thing out because I've got, um, I'll just turn on the visual cut list. So I've got the visual cut list showing here on this test. And then I would come in and position how I want to look at it. So most likely with that, I'd want to have a straight down look and the camera perspective. It also remembers like what perspectives you choose, all those things it'll remember. So you can jump back and forth. So this is how I'd want to see the visual cut list. And so I'd come in now and I would right click and hit update. And now if I go from the main view to the test, you can see everything, um, what, what's visible, the camera position, everything is remembered. But you do have to remember if you make a change to a view, like if I wanna make this a little bigger and then I go click on test again, it's just gonna go back because I did not I did not uh, save it. So now I made it bigger. If I right click and update, now if I click on it, it stays there. Or if I go away from it and come back to it, 
it remembers everything. And that's something I forget a lot. I'll make a bunch of changes, get my uh, what's visible changed, and, and then I'll forget to update, and I'll go on to something else. Well, as soon as I go on to something else, all of those changes are forgotten because I haven't updated it. So um, that's kind of where I'm at now. I'm pretty close to um, going ahead and taking this over to layout and start to make a set of plans. I will probably before I do that, I'll make a copy of this section here. Um, and then I will call that um, uh, parts and I'll separate these uh, instead of being laid out in plywood, I'll put them together in common parts and and uh, you know in such a way that when in layout I can go in and put dimensions and because this would be as far as uh, showing you how to cut it out of plywood this is a visual cut list but as far as showing you how to make each part I want a different layout for that so I'll have a separate page and of course I'll do a page in metric and then do the identical page in um, imperial so that's kind of where I'm at um, I, I thought it would be important to kind of show you um, where I'd gotten to and also how to use these views. I can have as many of these views as I want. And then I've already kind of jumped to layout a little bit. I'm not quite ready to get started there, but I, I'm, I'm just getting it set up and I've got multiple pages, but you can see I've got this main view. If I click on that main view and I bring over my um, uh, tab, this where it says scene, so all of those scenes that I have back in SketchUp, I have access to here. So now I can click visual cut list. So from the very same model that I bring in, I'll just have a copy of this model on each page. And I can also scale this down. So if I want to do just little areas and I can get in here and it connects right back to SketchUp and I can make it smaller or bigger. Say if I'm going to zoom in on one part, um, I can do something like that. So it's... Um, it's nice that you know all of those scenes then become uh, you know totally accessible to you with these instances. These little windows here um, are windows back into SketchUp and they stay interconnected. So if I go into SketchUp and I make a change to this uh, and I update, then this will update as well. So it's it's live and connected. So and again, this is the pro version. This is SketchUp. If you're going to do flat plans, remodels, build houses, you know, design uh, to print out to show people, you'll most likely have the pro version. And with that, you get this companion program, which works seamlessly with SketchUp. Okay, well, that's kind of where I'm at right now. And I am going to continue working on this. And in the next video, I'll update you where I'm at. And I'll probably have a little bit more done in layout. And uh, my, my main thing here is I don't want to jump over to layout and get a lot of work done and then find out that I have need to cha make changes over here. So in SketchUp, I, again, like working out the visual cut list, I really wanted to tighten that up. Instead of telling you to buy five sheets of plywood, now I'm telling you, you can do this in three and uh, you know save a few bucks. All right. Well, if you like these uh, SketchUp videos using technology in your construction business, please like the video. Also, uh, share it with others and, of course, subscribe to the channel. Lots of videos there, over 230 of them uh, covering tool reviews and how-tos, DIY, um, organization, just tons of stuff as well as some projects. And I uh, try to do a little bit on technology as well and keep it, you know, sort of the whole gamut of what I need to do in my contracting business. And if you want a set of workbench plans that you see me use in my other videos, be sure to click on the link right here. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.